Hey guys, Pit Master here. Um, I got a great um, idea for this topic by uh, one of my guys on uh, YouTube, Vertical Vertex. All right, so check him out, Vertical Vertex. Um, he asked, like, uh, I get this a lot, balancing your martial arts school reality, like keeping it real, and then keeping students. Um, I don't think that's very hard, actually. Um, like, if you want to be a really rough school and a tough school and beat the shit out of each other, like we used to do back in the old days. And I thought that was the only way it should be. Because that was reality. Um, but you can't, you can't run a real school like that. Unless it's a fight gym. Uh, but we're talking about a martial arts school. Even a fight gym nowadays, they don't spar as much as they used to because they've realized that sparring too much causes too many injuries, chronic and acute. Like they'll get cut all the time and in the long run, they'll probably get brain damage. I, I, I can't even believe after all the sparring we used to do because back in the 70s, 80s, even early 90s, I mean, that's the way we thought it should be and we used to just beat the shit out of each other. So I can't even believe that I can even remember my own name. After, I mean, they make a big deal about concussions now. Like almost every day, someone you get your bell rung in sparring because you were going all out. But it's not a good way to run a school or even a fight team. Even like I said, even the fighters now realize that and they do a lot more drilling and a lot more controlled sparring. Um, and the gyms that don't, um, they might think they're being tougher, but they're always pulling out of fights because their guys are always getting injured. So you can't have both. Um, you have to balance it. And for a fight team, it's a little different. Um, that's a whole other video. But for a martial arts school, I like to think of it like we're training for the street to stay safe. So are cops. They're training for the street, right? They have guns. When they're doing drills and, 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 and scenarios, they're not using real bullets, right? Imagine if they did. Imagine if they wanted to keep it real all the time. They'd be dead. Imagine if you were a fight, uh, you were fight you were training in a fight, uh, knife fighting martial art. You'd be dead, there wouldn't be any left. So when people do like knife fighting videos, you, I mean, they've actually not been a knife fighter or else they wouldn't still be here. If a guy's teaching about the quick draws of your gun, he hasn't been doing that or he'd be dead, right? We know that, right? The same is, is true in, 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 a, in a huge part in, in the martial arts, just the empty hand. Most of us that have taught our teaching, we used to bang really hard all the time. And we're teaching the lessons that we learn from that, both the successes and the failures. So we, we get to do that. But when you're teaching your students, they don't always have to bang. Okay, for, I mean, when a street fight starts, it's gonna be on, it's gonna be up, over quickly. So they don't have to get used to getting punched in the face all the time, they just don't. When you guys spar, you don't have to punch hard in the face. You don't have to do a lot of takedowns and stuff because your students will always be getting hurt. But you can still train them very, very hard. Like when they're in the bag, they should be going all out. When they're drilling on the pads, they should be going all out. When they're sparring with each other, they should be doing it with, with a lot of control, but a lot of speed and a lot of movement, seeing what works and what doesn't. Then when they're, when they're drilling, they should drill pretty hard but it should all be what one guy knows what the other one's doing. One of the main reasons they're, they're gonna get, one of the main ways they're gonna get hurt in your dojo, and one of the main things you should watch out for is when they're doing freestyle sparring, even if it's soft, if they're allowed to do full takedowns, that's when most people are gonna get hurt. Because while one person's taking the other one down and the other guy is trying to defend the takedown, knees get injured all the time. So we like to do drilling takedowns back and forth 
And then when they do takedowns in sparring, it's only it's only a, a partial takedown. They can't go all the way to the ground because what, if one person is going all the way to the ground and the other person is defending it, he's putting his leg one way and his foot's on the ground. Next thing you know, he's just torn his ACL, his MCL, all kind of stuff. So we don't like that. And now you might say, well, then it's not as real. The street's going to be real. Right. But then your guys are always going to be injured, so they're not going to be much good in a street fight anyway. And like I said, somebody's going to pull a gun out, it's going to be real bullets, but when you practice, you're not going to practice with someone with real bullets. So you have to you have to balance you have to balance or you're always going to have either you're always going to have injured students and you won't have many of them cuz they'll quit. So you can train them smart and tough, like hardcore conditioning. Hardcore conditioning is one of the things that separates our gym from other gyms. We do hardcore conditioning, hardcore drilling, a lot of repetition, right? But when we spar now, we spar smart and we don't let them go all out because that's the way it used to be when it was in my, in my backyard. But I also worked full time as a registered nurse and that's how I made my money. So if my guys got hurt and they didn't want to come anymore, it didn't bother me. I wasn't making money off my gym in my backyard. I was just trying to get together with a bunch of guys and beat the shit out of each other. And things turned out pretty good. Chuck Liddell came out of it. Glover came out of it. You know, some of my top fighters came out of it. But you can never be successful as a martial arts school owner if you always want to beat the shit out of each other. You can't be really soft though, right? You have to do hardcore conditioning. Drill those takedowns. Drill those takedowns, right? Drill the punches and kicks with each other. Do hard mitt work. Hard shield work. I mean, knee those shields really hard. And when you're on the bag, make them simulate that they're hitting someone in a street fight so they get that muscle memory going and they get that visualization going. But when they spar, freestyle sparring should be controlled. That's where you're going to lose your students, guys. Freestyle sparring. Either hardcore cake takedowns or a lot of hardcore face and head contact. Concussions, cuts, takedowns, knees. And people just don't like it. Most people want to learn self-defense, but they also got to go to a job and they don't want to limp to work or not be able to do their job because some overzealous student took them down too hard. So think of that, guys. And uh, thanks a lot, um, Vertical Vertex, for this idea. It was a great one. So thanks for coming. Please comment. Please subscribe. And if you have any questions or any other topic you want me to cover, I will. Thanks for coming, guys.